I'm Jeff Wagg. I'm the host of Built to Go, a van life podcast. And, of course, this channel. I'm sitting here in my van, Paguris, and we are about to head out on quite the adventure this summer. We're going to visit every place in the United States named Aurora. And what's odd about that is that we already did this in 2019. I've already visited them all, but I thought it would be interesting to compare what I saw in 2019 and what I'm seeing now in 2021, right as the pandemic is hopefully winding down. Now, this is a vlog about that journey, but it does not have the videos about the auroras. Those are separate. So this vlog is about the journey to get to the auroras and what happened in the in-between spaces that won't fit in the aurora videos. So stay tuned, be prepared for some unusual things and maybe some challenging content. Let me show you. We start our journey in Chicago, which isn't too surprising as that's where I live, and we're heading to Dutchman Lake. Traffic was fairly light considering that it's Chicago, and it didn't take us long to get out into the long, vast, flat expanses of I-57. Be sure to Google Mad Gasser of Mattoon. It's one of the more interesting stories of this very flat land. Ah, the Effingham Cross. Hi, I made it to my first stop here. This is Dutchman's Lake in southern Illinois. Not exactly sure what town this is, but I did make it this far. It's kind of a nice place. There's a lake here, and I'm actually standing on the dam. And if you look behind me over here, there's a parking lot where people park. You can see my van way down there. And from everything I've read, this is an amazing place to see the sunset. And it looks like that might be the case. We shall see. Not the worst sunset ever, but I'm a little bit let down. I feel like I was promised more. The trip from Vienna to Aurora, Kentucky wasn't very far. It only took about an hour and a half. It took us over these lovely bridges and into Kentucky. Upon arriving in Aurora, I went straight to Cherokee State Park, which is going to be a big part of my Aurora video. One of the things I love about doing these trips is the unexpected. See that there? That's a cypress. Not something I'd expect to see in Northern Kentucky. And then there's this mystery. You'll notice that there is no horse and no driver, just this doggo. There's also no slow moving vehicle sign on the back of the buggy, so maybe it isn't Amish. I can only tell you that that dog sat in that chair for well over an hour as I explored the area, and the only thing I can figure is that his owner is gone fishing. But these guys here are also protecting their vehicle, so hmm, maybe that's a thing. And they're at the Hitching Post, one of the big tourist attractions in Aurora, and I'm sure there's a story 
about Leap and Lena. Oh, hi there. Didn't see you hanging on the ceiling upside down like a bat. You know, it's funny, whenever somebody does a van life vlog, it seems to always involve making coffee. That seems to be the cherished moment of the day when you wake up in someplace beautiful and make coffee. And I am fortunate enough that today I actually did wake up somewhere beautiful. I am camped out here at Natchez Trace, which is an amazing thing that I really never heard of. I mean, I'd heard of Natchez Trace, but I didn't know what it was. It's a kind of a curated 450 mile long road that follows what was originally a buffalo trail and then it was an Indian trail and now it is this limited access road that's just for pleasure basically. You're only allowed to go 50 miles an hour, commercial vehicles aren't allowed, and it's just this really pleasant beautiful drive and every so often there's a little camping area or a picnic area. I'm technically at a ferry landing right now so I didn't pay anything to stay here and I didn't have any problems over the night. It was perfectly quiet and nice and I woke up to, well, this. And sure, the weather is not great. It's windy, it's kind of cold, but I don't care. I like being out here and I really like the sound of the birds. That is an easy thing to miss. I figured while I'm making coffee, you might as well have a little chat. Uh, one of the nice things about traveling like this, where you're completely free to do whatever you want, you don't have schedules unless you want them, you don't have to be at a hotel at a certain night, you don't have to be somewhere to meet anybody unless you want to, is that you get to take all these little side trips and kind of just go where your interest wanders. And uh, I found myself in Murray, Kentucky yesterday. Oddly, it wasn't on my plans, I had no idea I was going to be there, and I walked around this cute little downtown and learned a little bit about their culture and how there's a very controversial statue on the courthouse, and how it's a university town, and all the businesses downtown that used to be where you bought your clothes and furniture and where your lawyer was and all that, now cater to basically kids going to college. They're like pubs and some vintage stores and things like that. And it, unlike most of these small towns I've seen, this one was actually in pretty good shape. So Murray, Kentucky, I wish you the best and I enjoyed spending, oh, 20 minutes in your town as I drove through. But there were several other moments on this trip that I can't share with you. It's not that I can't share the story with you, I'm not hiding anything. It's that I didn't catch them on camera. And uh, even though, you know, we live in the world of YouTube where people are sharing more of their lives than ever before, the camera's only on for a tiny, minuscule part of that. And while I try to whip the camera out anytime there's something interesting, it's just not always possible. And we're still not at the point where an iPhone camera comes close to matching what the human eye can see. For example, this morning I woke up and I'm wandering about, and it was cold not that cold, it was in the 50s, and I'm looking for a flower to put in my my flower vase as I do every trip, and I saw these yellow flowers in a field growing under some trees. I thought, oh, those are great. And as I walked over to the flowers, they erupted and flew away because they weren't flowers. They were American goldfinch, a flock of them feeding on the ground, I guess, and I would love to be able to share that with you. I wish I had video of that that I could show you. And I don't, because I wasn't filming anything at that time because I didn't have a reason to. There have been several moments like that on this trip. As I was driving down here, I saw a wild turkey eating a deer. I'd never seen that before. I didn't know wild turkey ate deer. I'm pretty sure they don't hunt and kill them. All right, back to the coffee ritual. My ritual, this isn't all that interesting, and if you've watched my video on making coffee, you're probably like, oh, here we go again. Great deal of my coffee ritual involves actually finding the coffee, because every morning I forget that I don't keep it in here. I actually keep it 
in here. No, it's this one. <laughs> no, it's gone. My coffee's gone. Somebody took it. What do you mean it isn't here? I recently loaded up on food and everything got moved around. Oh, there it is. And you know, there it is. It's not the most exciting thing in the world. It's just coffee. It's instant coffee. It's my, my coffee ritual. It's what makes me happy. I'm not serving this to anybody else. Nobody else is gonna drink it. It's just for me. And I kind of feel like I'm splurging a little bit because I got the Starbucks. I mean, I'm actually content with, you know, taster's choice. Folgers might be pushing it. Maybe. I had a Scoutmaster once and he said, as far as coffee in the morning goes while you're camping, as long as it's warm and brown, he'll drink it. I might be a little pickier than that. I've got my nice warm steaming cup of coffee in my plastic insulated mug because that's my ritual. That buzzing you're hearing is a speedboat going by. And the speedboats here aren't for racing so much as that they're to get people to their fish faster. <laughs> uh, so today I'm driving to Dismal's Canyon and I hope to encounter some Dismalites. This is a uh, bucket list item for me. And um, if you're wondering what Dismalites are, you're, you're probably thinking of some kind of Dungeons and Dragons creature, which these could be, but they're actually a species of glowworm that are amazing. It, they're just, they, they give off this amazing, exquisite light. And when you go in the cave, it looks like you're under the stars, except that they're slightly blue. It's really amazing. And these things aren't found very many places. New Zealand is one, there's a few in Australia. And then there's one place in North America that has them, and that is Dismal's Canyon, Alabama. So, good morning to you and all the ships at sea. I'm going to enjoy my coffee a little bit. Uh, the van has been doing great, 150,000 miles on the van, just about. Really, just, just nice to drive. I really felt like the van and me, we were like simpatico, you know? We're having an adventure together. I don't want to anthropomorphize things too much, but this van does have a soul that I don't. <laughs> But I think, I think that I do have an emotional attachment to this van, not only because I built out all this crap, but because the van seems to like to run. It, I know it's all in my head, it's just metal and plastic and gasoline, but boy, there are times when I'm on the road and I just feel connected with the road and the van and it's wonderful. That's something we don't talk about that much. You watch the van life videos and stuff, it's, it's people making coffee in these beautiful spots sometimes not wearing any clothes, depending on how attractive that is to the viewer. You can see my choice here. But the driving, the driving is a big part of it. It's not all about camping. It's sometimes just about being on the road and being in the world and moving through it and seeing all these little things that you can't always capture on camera, but that's okay. Those moments are kind of for you. Um, in Stephen King's book, The Body, which was made into the movie Stand By Me, there's a scene where the main character, who's played by Will Wheaton in the movie, has an experience with a deer by himself in the woods. And he doesn't share it with anybody. He doesn't share it with his friends. It's just his private moment with the deer. And I feel like that's a big part of why we're doing this, to get those moments, to create those moments. It's a type of alchemy. We're creating situations where those moments can happen. Now, obviously, I'm choosing to share some of them with you. That's the whole point of YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, whatever the heck service you want. But you don't have to share if you don't want to. I think I want to. Well, folks, I think I'm going to eat up and get ready to hit the road. I've got about an hour's drive left today. It's an easy day for me. And then I'm going to be recording all day at Dismal's Canyon. Catch that in another video. Thanks for watching, and I will see you down the road.